which empowers people with the power of creativity through learning, sharing, and collaborating. He has worked with clients like Star Sports, Bombardier, and Asian Paints, and is now developing mixed reality experiences with uh, for Microsoft's head mount devices. He is a multidisciplinary artist, designer, with a background in space and narratives, and his work focuses on creating user experiences through visual communication, product design, and immersive environments. Thoman, we welcome you. You may take over from here. And yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. Sure, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, hope you guys can hear me. Can you give me a quick thumbs up? So let me just uh, start my presentation. Can you guys see hello written full screen? Yeah. Yeah, Thomas. Okay, awesome. Okay, there is. Can you still see it? Yes. Yeah. So hi guys. Uh, uh, thank you for calling me here. Uh, so I am kind not a very uh, you know old designer i'm very young uh, uh, i don't have like a long journey to show showcase here but definitely an interesting one uh, i think so too so let me quickly introduce myself uh, i'm thoman that's my family uh, that's my mom dad and sister we're a very small family uh, and uh, i'm hailing from calicut kerala uh, it's a small coastal city in the north of Kerala. It's a beautiful small town. Uh, the reason also to show this picture is that I was born into a design family. Uh, my dad, uh, he is an event. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Thaman. Uh, are you uh, changing your slides by any chance? No. Uh, OK, OK. So uh, are you, uh, am I still at hello? Yeah. Then I'm changing my slides. Can you see the slide change? Uh, yeah, Thaman. Yeah. So yeah, this was the picture I wanted to show you guys. That's my family. Uh, as I told, like I'm I'm from Calicut, a small coastal town in Kerala. Uh, the reason also why I wanted to show you this picture is. I was born into a design family. Like my dad is an event manager. He does uh, stage shows and you know stage designs. Uh, my mom, uh, she's from an advertising background, and currently she works in uh, wedding planning and so on and so forth. And the little one there, my sister, is currently an urban designer. So uh, I just wanted to quickly touch upon the point. These guys are uh, really the, the foundation of how I built my work around and I just wanted to uh, tell the fact that keep your biggest critics close and uh, my biggest critique is my family and they're very close to me so uh, yeah I just wanted to make that point so that's me and my family and the background that I came from in 2010 uh, I ended up uh, getting a seat in NID it's a beautiful campus a beautiful people uh, more than uh, the academics, uh, it was a way of living which NID taught me. Uh, this was uh, one of our courses where we had to, you know, uh, go off uh, early morning sketches. So uh, I keep telling people like uh, I stopped looking at, I mean, I start, I stopped looking at and I started seeing things around. Meaning uh, nothing was different. The things were the same thing around me. But when I started seeing things, I started observing things and uh, I can mainly broadly uh, put it down as. Uh, okay. Yeah, three three things which stands out. I started observing things around me. I started empathizing things around me and I started solving for things around me. 
so uh, what is very unique was that these things were already there and there was nothing new it was just a way of looking uh, more than skill more than uh, me learning to draw or you know more than me learning to design i think these were the skills uh, the institute gave me and if you're just wondering where i am sitting i'm right at that corner because i tried finding a better picture but yeah it was not very popular then yeah so uh, i landed in a discipline called exhibition and spatial design uh, that is one of the most confusing disciplines in nid because uh, people do everything in that discipline so you can uh, we do like strategic design uh, at the bottom corner is uh, one of the films i did production design for uh, i did for a, a director known as anup sat and he recently did his uh, Malayalam debut feature film. Uh, then we had these tensile structures in the middle. You can see me, you know, working with structures and bending metal. Uh, and then we also had uh, plastic molding, and I, I, I was making these superhero costumes. Uh, and the bottom right is one of the videos which I shot, uh, which kind of uh, is one of the most uh, famous works of mine, irrespective of me working in mixed reality or not. So. uh that video went viral in 2020 and uh, i had uh, directed it so i was in a discipline where uh, uh i could do everything exhibition and spatial design was uh, a space could be anything a screen a room a story uh, and that kind of open up the possibilities uh, of what i could do and i'm really glad that i was part of this discipline but while i was there uh, we had major existential crisis uh, we were constantly asking why what am i doing you know uh, there's a better guy who makes a better film than me there's a better graphic guy who makes a, a better poster than me so uh, why would someone want a master of all trades and a jack of none was a big big daunting question uh, but yeah eventually everything made sense but that's in retrospect let's move forward uh the discipline brought this idea i don't know i am still trying to figure out is this the way because this is how i approach as we go forward you will see my mediums change so uh attacking a problem with a solution and not a medium is the way i have been brought up in design so when somebody calls in uh, calls me in as a design consultant the first thing i'm thinking is you know how do i solve this Uh, and it's sometimes disheartening that they already have a solution saying like bhai mere ko poster chahiye i'm like are problem kya hai like why people are not coming to your festival or is it you know it might be the wrong hashtags it may not be a poster design problem so can we push back and ask the right question is something which i kind of uh, uh, try to preach and i try to uh, do it as my for myself so whenever there is a problem uh, instead of uh, the client coming with the solution you sit down and you empathize with them and try to find the right solution for it and that could be any medium it could be a film it could be a sticker it could be a space it could be an app it could be anything so yeah that's all great in theory it's all fantastic when you're in college but uh, when you kind of jump outside uh, this is the process i went through uh, i learned a lot of things in college then i had to unlearn everything because nothing worked if i started preaching they'll say like please you know we have a, another designer he will come and work for you uh, work for them so then i had to uh, learn it again and this time i had to learn it with the new context so uh, in the bubble uh, call an id and the uh, design circle uh, the theories worked it was fantastic you know uh, the ideologies were great but the moment you stepped out uh, there was a long bit of unlearning which was called for and how do you learn it back again so uh, it was a tedious process and i'll take you through that process Uh, i was first placed in star sports like i worked there as an associate broadcast designer that's my desk uh, and uh, of course i wanted to call in attention also because uh, you know people were like are koi creative banda baitha hai udhar because my desk was just growing and i was just sketching and you know i was just populating it with uh, whatever inspired me uh, but it was a great great opportunity for me to work on large scale uh, projects uh, and have a intense impact 
so over the uh, i worked there for a year i almost did uh, 200 episodes for uh, content in hotstar and star sports i've put together put together a small uh, show reel most of the designs i've done were production design uh, meaning like the studio and the how it looks and the graphics behind it and the show packaging like when you're watching a cricket show there is a the how the show card comes the graphic language of it and how does that uh, you know extrapolate to the studio when the presenters are sitting or when the cricketers are talking so on and so forth so uh, i will just quickly show you a small show reel of the kind of work which i've done uh, i was uh, it was also my uh, you know uh, M- M- mumbai uh, i i got the taste of mumbai in terms of uh, its grandeur and its stardom so i met a lot of celebrities and you know i had my eyes big and open and i was like uh, really excited during this period so i'll just quickly show you a show reel we're building something uh can you hear the audio no right you can yeah yeah i at least i could hear the audio okay. we're building something here detective we're building it from scratch all the pieces are small glimpse uh, some of the you know some of the sets which i had done it was a very fast paced uh, industry uh, and the deliverables the kind of work i did in like one year uh, was like uh, some 50 odd sets and production because uh, there is no show stopping right and the show must go on and uh, especially when it's a uh, a live match like the tension level and everything was really really up in the air it was great but uh, one big question for me was like where did that design process go you know which i was bloating about uh, in the first half where i was uh, telling you observe empathize and deliver there was only deliver happening you know like i'm constantly delivering but it was in the, uh, in retrospect i think it is good because uh academically uh, when we were like you know a uh, very thought driven like we have fantastic ideas and there was always a hurdle of doing things and you know getting things done uh, here i was just doing i was just doing and you know delivering things but there was this after thought of like you know wh- why did i even like study this you know why where am i using the process how am i solving a problem here uh, is it just you know packaging and making things look good but uh, on the side you have to uh, believe in that process and uh, you know i'll take you through a case study where i could bring in the idea of uh, creative problem solving and help them uh, cricket uh, is a big sport uh, a lot of people watch it irrespective of whether it's well designed or not uh, but we can always make it better uh so this is how a, a typical commentary uh, session looks right like when it cuts on during a half time it cuts to these uh, three four people sitting in one desk and talking about the match i'm very sure all of you must have seen this happen during the match somewhere uh, this is very static right like there's just people standing there and talking about uh, cricket uh what kind of uh, what they wanted to make it a little more dynamic as you know they wanted to appeal it to a larger audience and uh more to the young audience and they wanted to because especially with the coming of t20 they wanted to make the sport like a young people sport so this sit down and talk was something which they wanted to move away from but they didn't know the solution so uh, a kind of uh, a process which i followed here was to you know take the content that they talk about 
and divide that in the space like rather than talking about everything at a single spot why don't you break it down into multiple pods and why don't you make these people move around and talk so uh, conceptually i built these uh, pods uh, one is known as the demo pod like over here where i wanted them to uh, demonstrate or show a demo of a certain uh, batting style or a bowling style uh, then I, I, I thought of a strategic pod where I thought I'll have a miniature set of the uh, like a wagon wheel, but in real life, like a physical one so that people can talk about strategies there. And then the finally the information center where, you know, you retrieve information from. It's almost like your Google where you go there and you know uh, how many wickets did Bumrah take uh, uh, till now and it pops up the answer in AR or something, but it started with a concept which like this saying that why don't we distribute the content across the floor uh, this was uh, well accepted and i started um, uh, you guys can check out my behance page where i have uh, explored multiple options to reach at this design uh, but this is one design where i've actually uh, made these different pods and you know blocked the content on each one and gave it to the show director uh, and said hey like you know when you start the show you have to start from the home base then why don't the anchor move around uh, along with the guest and you know make the show more dynamic so uh, this is how the final t20 uh, this is the t20 world cup which happened last uh, and this is how the final real set uh, kind of was put up uh, which is pretty close to the render which is pushed out and I'll just quickly show how it got translated on TV. So you can see here how the anchor is interacting with the space. Yeah, I've muted the sound here. You can see uh, that player is in augmented reality and this is the strategic pod. That's the demo pod. Back to the strategic pod. Uh, that's Mabad Kef. So yeah, uh, created that space uh, into a more dynamic space. I don't know whether anyone of you have caught this on TV, but yeah, it was a few years back. Uh, they still use this set uh, for some series and also do turn into tune into Star Sports to find it. Uh, yeah, so while that was happening, uh, I always have my side hustles going on. Uh, uh, one thing which I didn't study in college was how to use softwares. They didn't teach us any of that. I'm glad they didn't teach us because um, that was that was something you can pick up after college. I, I, I truly believe so, but uh, it was a task. So after the day job, you, I used to come and you know I used to invest uh, uh, time in picking up the software, uh, starting from Photoshop and Illustrator to you know uh, Cinema 4D, uh, SketchUp, Rhino, uh, Keyshot. So yeah, uh, I there were two years where there was 36 days of type, uh, which is an online contest, which uh, okay, it's not a contest. It's just a challenge which happens where, you know, artists from all around the world kind of uh, interpret alphabets uh, each day in different, different uh, forms and techniques. Uh, I'm from a space design background and in the top two, you can see how I learned Illustrator. So I, 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 my target was to learn a software a year uh, picking up the alphabets. Uh, I didn't have to think whether it's solving anybody's problem or not. Uh, just that my mom used to think, you know, when somebody asked, oh, kya karta hai? She, ek, thoda pata nahi, alphabets likhte hai aajkal. Uh, and I used to post this constantly on Instagram and, you know, uh, upload them on B hands and everyone was going like, uh, is he all right? You know, like, uh, <laughs> went to MD and what happened <laughs> anyway but uh, I was very clear that this is uh, for me to learn the software uh, and I kept it kept it uh, going kept it going so towards the end last two rows you can see I ventured into 3D uh, I used to use 3D to make those production sets and because uh, there was a requirement every day you know every day you're making a set you became so fluent with 3D without even me realizing I became good in 3D but I never used it for an artistic uh, expression of a sorts. So this kind of really like helped me to use, uh, uh, bring my ideas into 3D and you know render it out and try and test. 
uh, and as I, my alphabets were progressing, I could also see my styles improving and you know things becoming more and more better. So here's a closer look at some of them. So when I reached the letter I, uh, I still remember uh, I got a call. I got a call saying that, hey, um, I'm so and so, I work in Microsoft. Uh, I've been seeing these alphabets uh, that you've been posting on Instagram. Uh, we would want to, you know, gift that to our uh, employees because we are uh, starting this new mixed reality studio and uh, we want uh, your alphabets to be their part of our uh, give. I mean, their, uh, when they welcome a new member, they wanted to give that as a gift. So I sent them across my uh, uh, work and uh, yeah, like, you know, I thought that would never have any purpose. Suddenly they were printed out and used as posts, postcards in Microsoft. Uh, and this kind of turned into an opportunity where uh, they uh, took forward the conversation with me and asked, hey, you know, there is an opening for an art lead. Like we're looking for somebody who can uh, work with space and quickly iterate and quickly come up with solutions. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm, the, I'm the person. You know? Uh, check out my portfolio and suddenly quickly I put everything back my bag uh, and I went to uh, Hyderabad uh, and that time I think 2018 uh, I was honestly quite new to this entire VR AR world and uh, I remember going there and seeing the first uh, HoloLens uh, when they were wearing it and I tried it on and that's when I realized oh, oh man like this 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 thing is the future you know uh somehow i have to get this job <laughs> you know there's no way uh, I, I i should let this go so there was this one video which was showed there i'll just show you the vision video of the app that i was working for i was working on an app which uh, did uh, space planning so you could bring 3d object into space and you know move things around and work around with it so i'll just show you the video <laughs> Penny walks in on location. She has to set up the space for a product unveil for a group of clients. Enter Microsoft HoloLens, the world's first untethered holographic computer. The device maps the room in order to construct a digital map of the space, allowing Penny to fill the room with holograms. What you see here is next generation hand tracking. Penny moves the holograms throughout the room in real time and space. The boxes react using physics-based simulations, just like they would in the real physical world. Sorry, Penny. This may be a bad time, but the client is on a earlier flight. <laughs> We're so not ready. Should we start to panic? Not yet. Just bring the team in, please. Windows brings spatial sound, articulated hand tracking, and Samir's own hands into VR. I can see your heart at work, Samir. But Penny needs your help. Yeah, sure thing. Just let me check out this bunker real quick. Samir, the client is on a pass per usual. Kai joins the conversation as a hologram. Samir also appears as a 3D avatar, which he scanned himself using his phone. Cute. I tried. So, how's it going? It's not. This is the flagship store. It's got to be. It's got to be unforgettable. Yeah. Not exactly blowing my hair back. Yeah, the space is driving me nuts. All right. How about a change of scenery? Welcome to Hey Club. Imagine the web of the future where you can draw inspiration from the cloud in three dimensions and all around you. Some inspiration, please. These bots help them interface with businesses. This one helps them find amazing 3D assets. Kai uses a pen that Samir uses a specialized controller in order for them both to manipulate and design the 3D creation. The team forgets that they are not together physically as they continue collaborating on the design. Penny picks up the eyedropper to grab a color from the physical ceiling in order to make things feel more anchored. 
For a conversational bot, we see a real-time translation of what Penny's client is saying. Impressive. That was the concept vision video for the product that we worked. Uh, it was insane, like just the idea of this could be done in real time, you know, as an app. Uh, the whole idea was just amazing. Uh, I got an opportunity to work with uh, world class uh, technical artists and uh, creative coders to, you know, bring this into life. I still consider myself as an amateur in this kind of tech. So uh, it was phenomenal working with them and my first project uh, with them was to, uh, so uh, once I joined Microsoft, my first project was to build a holographic art installation. Uh, it, they, we were celebrating our 20 years of Microsoft India campus uh, and we had this uh, 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 lobby area which was uh, almost 200 feet of height. So I came up with this idea of uh, intelligent cloud, intelligent edge, which uh, Satya Nadella's motto was, and he want I want I wanted to depict that in a cloud format, and I wanted uh, data to be you know almost go up like a tornado into the cloud and getting stored there. Uh, it, it was just to understand the medium and understand the uh, way. I can take an artistic expression and bring it uh, into a device like that. It kind of pushed its limit to understand how much load it can take. Because uh, a lot of us were doing this for the first time, so we thought art is a good place to fail, right? Like, uh, I don't have to, uh, I, it's, if it doesn't work, also it's fine. So we were like, let's try it. It's an art installation. What will go wrong? Uh, so uh, the installation went up. Uh, those are the posters on the right side. You can see a screen grab. Uh, we were not able to screen record it because uh, the HoloLens uh, crashed because of the weight, uh, the file size that we had. But it was this uh, humongous holographic installation uh, in the middle of the campus. Uh, I'll just quickly show you a video of how it really looked. Uh, it's funny because you will not be seeing anything and people will be just looking up into the sky and saying wow or like you know reacting and interacting it just looked like <laughs> so uh, that is reality and the other one was the mixed reality you saw but uh, it was a great experience it was a great experience to introduce this technology to people and see how they responded just having a 3D object float in air and you know anchored to the location itself was uh, magical. Yeah, uh, coming to designing for mixed reality. So uh, let's uh, quickly tell you where mixed reality stands. Uh, you guys might be knowing about virtual reality where that head mount, uh, you know, the completely covered thing where you're completely immersed and you know augmented reality are face filters and all those things come under augmented reality and mixed reality is trying to be somewhere in the middle I and mean, that's what they're trying to achieve it's like it's it's immersive but you know you can still see the real world around you it scans the room and you know it kind of matches the lighting and it tries to blend the real and the virtual so let me quickly uh, take you through the case study once I wear the headset, uh, headset is there and uh, there is nothing that you can play around with. Like these are 3D assets uh, which you want. And if you want to move things around and see how things move around, you need something to uh, play around with. And to put a 3D model into the HoloLens was a little task. Like, you cannot drag and drop or you know just uh, copy paste it and it will not deploy it on the HoloLens. 
so uh, it's almost like opening up uh, opening ms paint and having a blank canvas it's scary right like where do you start uh, where do you put a first dot uh, so that is a problem and the process kind of uh, we followed like again you can see like it could be uh, the film background or the spatial background you know there was a lot of storyboarding which i did uh, to come up with different scenarios in which this can be used because building a mixed reality experience is an expensive affair in terms of money and time right it takes a lot of time a lot of labor so a lot of these things were first pre visualized as uh, uh, sketches uh, and then uh, i even used uh, basic animation and uh, i used basic animation and uh, you can see 3d models uh, underneath where i have tried to yeah so i have just tried to play around with uh, renders and 3d models to simulate how it looks it might when it is deployed in 3D. So uh, we did a lot of permutations and combinations to you know get the approval and uh, get people on board to this project. Uh, and once that is done, the inspiration was uh, instead of giving a bland canvas, why don't we give some elements, you know, and keep some elements open so that you know you fill in the blanks rather than it just being an open canvas. So uh, this jigsaw puzzle was an inspiration where you are like, hey, this this is an interesting thing. It's guiding me to uh, move in a certain directions or fill a certain path, but it's not. Uh, it's forcing me to interact. It's not complete. It's that incomplete state which is nice. So uh, we came up with these uh, demo zones. That these are preloaded demo zones on your Hololens, and at that point of time. HoloLens was targeted for first line workers. It was not for consumers like you and me. It was mostly for factory workers who are in a factory who are moving things around or you know planning their next station or planning their next move. Because the slightest move there can be a big affair. Like for example, you bring you buy in a big machinery and if it doesn't fit through the door, uh, there might be crores wasted. So a small move in a factory is a big decision and that's that's what we were targeting initially to place uh, mixed reality solutions in it was not uh, focused on consumers like you and me or even designers even though the vision video which we saw it was an interior designer or a retail designer who was moving things around but this is completely focused on the working class and how people can move things uh, to make decisions so uh, I will. Uh, I think I'll have to jump quickly to uh, show you on my Behance page that uh, the video. Just give me a second. Yeah. Can you guys see my Behance page? Yeah, yeah, I've documented this whole process here because for me also it was something new and I wanted to see how I personally would attack it and do it. So uh, there is a lot of learning from a lot of disciplines like I've taken storyboarding from filmmaking, layouting from graphic design, uh, there is sound design. Uh, you can see the space design aspect of me is also coming into play. So. Uh, as I told you, like I made these small demo pods. This was the first one. This is the second one. Uh, and here is a 3D model, which uh, it kind of looked like this. And it will, you know, once you open it on VR, it will scale. It will scale and it, you will be in that immersed space. Uh, so we were designing for uh, virtual reality as well as mixed reality. So we didn't want the entire room to be a factory because uh, I'll show you in mixed reality. What happens is that if you are in a room and you deploy this model in a room, the elements in your room will still be there as obstacles. So I will just show you how it looked in VR. So you can see here, uh, 
this is how the VR, uh, how it looked in VR, these small pods where people, uh, so you can see like the gate is not, so there are, it, I kind of gamified it where I kept the gate open and said, hey, close the door. Uh, can you use the stretch tool to do that? Uh, then the user had to use a stretch tool to do that. And then I was like, hey, uh, move the cartons on top of the uh, platform and they had to use the move tool to do that. So uh, it kind of introduced you to the software. Uh, all these are almost like demo demo gaming zones. You know, you when you have games, you have these demo that you can download and try it before you buy. But these are very, very big purchases. purchases. So this is a demo zone which I had designed. So like this I had designed for measure and uh, Sorry to interrupt, Thoman. I think we are unable to see the. Yeah, we can see your behinds now. Okay. I think it's uh, it's it's dropping off when it is getting full screen. So I'll just keep it here, like this. So, uh, so basically these are just uh, jigsaw puzzles where things are half done, and it attracted the user to go and complete these things. So this is the nudge tool. Uh, so how can you use the nudge tool? So um, yeah, so that is VR and in terms of AR, it kind of looked like this, like you can see, uh, you can see uh, and this is the best quality recording that you get from the HoloLens currently, but when you actually view it through the glasses, it's much more brighter. Um, it's much more clearer, but this is when you record it. Uh, it's 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 not uh, reach that level where it can you know record an HD video. So uh, this is mixed reality where you know I am using my hands. There is no uh, joystick. Uh, I am actually completing a conveyor belt. You can see that conveyor belt is open, and I'm I've, I've given the task to the user to fit that conveyor belt into that. So you can see collision getting activated. So if it's colliding, it's giving me a signal. It's also snapping uh, and you know it's in place. So yeah. yeah. So quickly jumping back to the presentation. I hope you can can see my presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, though that was one project which got shipped, uh, I think 2019 end. So uh, I don't know when HoloLens will come to all of us, but it's a pre canned app where, you know, meaning it's one of those apps which is preloaded, which you can check out. Uh, if you want to plan your space uh, earlier, it was for, as you said, like I had created it for factory scenario, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure the same thing can be uh, your room or uh, for an architect or an interior designer or somebody who wants to do space planning, want to bring a model into physical space and do it. Uh, apart from that, uh, the couple of other projects which I worked on, like these are the concept for those uh, because uh, it's uh, mostly under NDA, they are working on it. Like uh, some of them are to do with uh, data visualization, and you know, uh, you can also see spaces moving around, and uh, so uh, they are creating digital twins of a space. So uh, I, I I would like to just show you these concept art which uh, uh, I had made, and most of them are provocative, and also uh, I work with. Uh, a technical artist to actually build this into the um, app. Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's that's been like quickly my journey uh, with design and my co-principle, uh, I don't know when, whether it stands out, but I believe is using art with an intent. Uh, and that was something which I kept on, you know, went back to because clearly there is no one medium I'm sticking towards. There is no one type of work I'm sticking towards. But whenever, even if when I'm uh, displaying my portfolio, I want uh, the, the, the factor I want to highlight the most is creative problem solving. Uh, and that was a new way of looking for me. Uh, 
and uh, that's what I'm advocating and that's something which really, really triggered this idea of we need to have conversations, we need to have a place where we can talk about art with intent. I'm not saying art without intent is bad, but can we have a forum, can we have a place where I talk about art with intent? So uh, me and my uh, uh, friend, he's also my batchmate from NID, uh, Srinihal Pauka, we kind of started this Instagram page known as Art with Intent. Uh, and our idea was to have an online community uh, which uses creative problem solving uh, by art and design circles and how can this be for everyone because we were tired of talking to artists and designers because they know this like again like I'm on a, in a design club but uh, I'm assuming there's a lot of engineers here or from other streams and I'm excited for that because we know this we are like yeah great design and art whenever we meet each other at a party we talk about it for hours but why is it not something outside the circle and we really wanted to create a free access you know a place where this can happen so during the lockdown uh, you know Srinihal is in Milan Italy so uh, he got the lockdown three months before us so he was quarantining and sitting there when I called him and said uh, Bro, I have a t-shirt and art with intent and a logo. Chahiye. And he's like, uh, for what? What is this thing? So I was like, no, no, I don't know. I need a t-shirt chahiye. because I was so bored. I was like, uh, I need a cool uh, logo. And he's like, no, no, you write something, you know. Uh, I didn't do right. Give me a brief. And I wrote this uh, small uh, uh, abstract about what art with intent could be just to get the t-shirt. And he forwarded to one of our seniors known as Sonam. So he read the concept note and he's like, dude, you have to do this. You know, this is the best time. And that's the time when everyone was going Instagram live. You know, you go on Instagram and every single person was on live. And uh, it didn't take, uh, I mean, he was like, Abhi karte, let's do it. There's nobody talking about this. Let's do it. Uh, he's in Sikkim. He works with the craftsmen there to develop products, uh, Sonam. So, uh, we uh, told, okay, first you become our guest and why don't you come and, you know, do the first show. So it started in April uh, and uh, May last year and it's been like uh, uh, six, uh, eight months now. And we have almost got 66 plus guests with like some six, seven types of shows. So I'll just quickly show you the kind of people who come and the conversation. I'll take you through the content. So me and Pauka kind of build this entire content creation platform where we are curators to talk about uh, design and art where they have used art with intent. So I'll just quickly show you a showreel of 2020 which we have put up. So uh, the, we, uh, there was phenomenal support. It was like everyone was just waiting to talk about this. Uh, we conduct shows like sketchbook tours, discussion rooms, workshops. Uh, things start from basic watercolor to, you know, uh, it can go up to how can people use creative uh, creativity to tell stories in societies. Uh, there is uh, shows like Studio Tour where an artist takes you around their studio, show their workspace. Uh, talk about their techniques, tools, inspiration, and so on. Quickly want to uh, showcase some of our uh, star highlights uh, who have come and spoken. Uh, Zach Liberman, he's a creative coder, a uh, teacher, and one somebody even like a big, I'm a big fan of his. He came and he spoke about poetic computation, how he uses code to design, and how he's solving problems through it. Uh, there is Shruti who spoke about the intersection between participatory policy and design. There was Tom Leach, he is a good friend. We we kind of uh, connected through Instagram and I've been following his work for some few years. So, uh, I mean, I didn't even know there was a profession where they visualized viruses. You know, like imagine the coronavirus that you see, somebody has actually made a 3D model. So there is a designer who is sitting there and doing it. So we brought Tom Leach to talk about that. Uh, very familiar, Rob Aaron uh, is a super senior. 
he was also very supportive of the initiative and he came in and he was talking about the importance of content creators and the evolution we have ratna who was uh, the dean of royal college of arts who spoken about politics and typography i mean these are two things which you know you might not know um, will come together but yes like do check out her book recommendations on that and then we have uh, like you know conduct workshops like making art with natural colors origami so on and so forth so uh, something that we studied uh, like when we were in nid also uh, it was not only uh, skill driven right it was also uh, uh, it was also um, the mindset that grew around you it was also uh, the context in which you design the the anthropology of things the the culture the you know the business of things and it was not only aesthetics which drive design so uh, we wanted to create a space where all these factors can come together and if any one of these topic interest anybody you know they should come here and then they should explore and find it so that is what happened to us so we are expecting that will happen to other people and we can open this domain uh, beyond art and design circle with this initiative so do follow us on art with intent do follow me on thomen and thank you guys and i think yeah one almost one hour uh all right hello so uh, now we'll be having a small q and a segment so uh, firstly i'll be asking you a couple of questions and then we'll take uh, questions from the audience uh, so the first question is what is your role what is your problem solving strategy and how has it changed through your roles from let's say uh, the time you graduated from nid to star sports to your present uh, profession yes some nobody comes with a problem right nobody will admit there is a problem to start with so uh, even uh, when it is in star sports also you know cricket doesn't have a problem if i don't design also that's why i said people will watch cricket but uh, it has always been pitching and i think it is something we have to do for some time at least in the coming years is like we have to advocate for design because it's something which is overlooked at so right from the beginning it's always been pitching where i'm pitching in and saying hey you know why don't we do something like this don't you think it's static you know you do the research that's why research becomes very important where you kind of uh, uh collect the data and go like even with the uh, uh initially i used to do the research by but now when i'm in microsoft i get the research so it's easier for me to find the solution so i think that's how it might have changed if it's changed but it's always creating that uh, uh identifying that uh, point of play for a design to happen because otherwise you are just going to say get something like uska thoda color change karo ya fir uska uh, branding change karo acha you guys are getting bored rebranding karte hai see that will that's what they will tell you you know uh, but it it it's like because nobody the designer has to come up with a design solution so uh, most of the times i'm sitting in meetings where there is pms engineers they are all talking like guys these guys are not understanding i'm like okay chalo i'll do a sketch and i'm sitting and i'm sketching this thing and suddenly 10 people in the room are understanding what is happening so uh, yeah so it's always been so it goes back to those three things which i told you know observe empathize and solve earlier also i've uh, i've seen a tree i've seen a plant i've seen a leaf but i've never noticed the way the veins grow or you know an idea has taught me that where i have to sit down and draw it and uh, observe it so when you start observing things around that really opens up and when i'm in these meetings also i'm also looking at where can i plug in where can i plug in design and i think it will take some more time for it to be where people understand that and come to you it's more like you going and you know uh, identifying that and creating your own uh, project out of it yeah i hope that answered your question yeah definitely like uh, 
even some of us can relate uh, like whatever you said regarding changing colors and changing font or completely rebranding just for fun so <laughs> anyway uh, moving on to the next question uh, what new technology excites you for the future of mixed reality yeah uh, uh, i think i see more than techno i think mixed reality itself has a uh, a long way to go at least from what i'm seeing because uh, it has its shortcomings that that's one reason why it's not in our hands yet uh, it has a issue of field of view it has an issue of uh, rendering uh, uh, it has a issue of uh, the amount of uh, you know uh, cloud computing it can do i think mixed reality itself is the exciting part of it uh, i am really hoping somebody solves the field of view issue where i feel more immersed in these things uh, because I, I i i was a little bothered by it when it was uh, you know uh, but you can't i think it's slowly slowly becoming better so i had a chance to use hololens 2 which become better um, so even when uh, you know it was projected like in the next uh, i think maybe 8 years is what they are looking for this technology to be ubiquitous like how we are using mobile phones in our hand i don't know whether apple will uh, shortcut that and come <laughs> do something which let them i'm really excited if they are <laughs> because uh, it's a fantastic technology and people are experimenting and i still think it's an experiment it's really not like even even though the kind of projects we are working on you can see it's a very small case for factory workers sitting somewhere in us they are the only small people who are using it and that to these fortune 500 companies so there is a long way to come and uh, there is a lot of experimentation happening let's see and uh, this remote working which is now uh, like uh, so popular uh, there is microsoft has launched his mesh and i'm really looking forward to uh, check out the video microsoft mesh like uh, they have just launched a uh, new application so it looks exciting let's see uh, i think even google is also going into this mixed reality segment with the google lens thing so yeah, google is the first person actually like you know i think all of us remember i remember google glass when that was the talk and then it kind of shut and uh, but all all of them have their side projects happening i'm very sure uh, but Uh, they are not foolproof yet there are a lot of uh, technology like tagging uh, scanning and it's so you know you scan a dark room versus a light room the way it performs is different uh, i don't know how they will overcome it and there are some fantastic people who are working on it like even to deploy a 3d model when i deploy a 3d model on a site uh, it should uh, take the lighting condition of that site and you know reflect that then only you will feel that it belongs there otherwise it will feel like it's a jump i am excited for it but yeah i i am looking at uh, the you know people who are at the forefront of this technology to solve that i love playing around with it so uh, i am really excited so that's where i am i was very clear like because most of the people there are people who are inventors right there are people who have that uh, idea of inventing new ways and things i realize i cannot get into that domain but i like to play around and you know use it and my tool is imagination so i want to use that and you know see and provocate people uh, and then uh, these technical artists will come or technologists will come and help me do it so have like picked up certain things but i know like where the limits are but i still try to nudge them and push them but uh, yeah it's it's a team work and there's a lot of people involved in putting out uh, one one experience out uh well uh, if anyone from the audience has any questions so please feel free to unmute yourself and ask um, hi this is noisha i had yeah. a question so um can you um what are or who are some of the artists who have had a great influence over your work your style and your process yeah i mean i think the process is very like 
you know like it goes back to nid like it goes back to what mp ranjan talks about it goes goes back to uh, uh, that uh, but in terms of style uh, oh god i might tell you instagram names or you know it's it's like that you kind of follow them on instagram and uh, let me think uh, yeah I, you know remember like i i remember like Uh, this whole 36 days of time i was so kicked by people he is very famous now but that was 2012 and i was like this guy makes uh, renders every day how is he able to do that and that was such an inspiration and that's the only reason why i started doing that and uh, at that point of time i i was not even like i used to uh, like two days before i used to make the artwork and be ready and here was people throwing one artwork every day after like some i didn't even do 36 days i did some 20 26 days and i got the microsoft job and i stopped doing it <laughs> so uh, i don't know how he continues man so he is definitely an inspiration uh, and i also kind of uh, my batch mates are great inspiration from nid uh, i keep seeing fantastic works uh, from uh, srinihal or you know all these guys uh pragun uh, kathy and all these so we all like kind of share um inspirations to each other or we see each other's work and uh, constantly pushing and instagram for me is a great source of inspiration uh, especially with new technology there is a uh, dot koi exactly i'm going to tell instagram names i don't even know their real names i think his name is dot koi he's pretty cool Uh, maybe i'll i'll put out those on my stories or something because i remember them by pages there is this sculpture a guy called david ulmeto like i really like the way he sculpts so a lot of these designs which uh, uh, these uh, modules which are created in virtual reality are inspired by him like he creates these steps inside steps inside steps uh, and apart from that uh, your classic asher and people like that and i also i think i am a big movie buff so uh, there is a lot of storytelling and uh, movies which inspires me uh, so yeah very generic but like it's not any particular it's, it's and that's the fun thing about being multidisciplinary like you can get inspired by a ceramic artist and i can make it into we are and nobody will real realize or you know get inspired by a poster and make it make that into a dance form and people are like okay, where did this come from i am really excited to cross pollinate and that's something which i love doing like i i see something and i'm like hey what if you know that that dancer becomes like you know how, that dance form can i make it into a clay pot or you know or oh, that uh, video that video looks so good can i recreate that in space like with an interesting cut shot can i build a space like how i'm watching a movie so these things excite me and i'm always thinking of connecting two things or three things at once yeah thomas so maybe you can uh, put up a story like you suggested uh, listing <laughs> tagging all of your favorite artists and maybe we all of us can be inspired by them as well absolutely i'm sorry for not remembering i never expected someone asking me that yeah also be uh, people uh, i think became the first artist to sell an nft recently he created 5000 it's a collection of 5000 of his images created daily so this was 2016 when i i first found out about people and he had and every day he was putting it and every day i used to go and check at like how is he doing it and uh, it's just that how is he doing it and you know my fellow roommate was there pranab he was a furniture designer uh, and he knew i know and both of us were sitting and cracking down like how did he do must have made it but you know by the end of 26 days i realized how he is doing it because itna assets bana chuka hai then it's just tak 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 you know very fast like towards the end even i became very fast like the first few i must have taken like the whole 24 hours to do it and i think most of the time goes in deciding what to do i think at least for me like there is a lot of 
I don't jump directly into 3D. There's a lot of sketching. Uh, so I have multiple sketch, sketching uh, sketchbooks and you know I keep uh, iterating that so that uh, once I reach the software I do not bend towards what the software wants me but the other way around you know I it, it follows me so I resolve everything on paper book and I'm like this is how I want uh, the problem when I found when you directly attack it with the software is that you try to move how the software takes you so I think that's been a that's been a differentiating factor. I, I I know a lot of people who start with the software, but I go back I go back sketching I go back resolving that. So I exactly know how that model should be like. Even when you saw that cloudscape, I had that rough sketch with me when I went to the three D artist the coders and telling hey guys and they are like hey nee ho jayega. <laughs> like you know first thing is that hey nee ho jayega and. It's great to hear that because you know that's what they're going to say. But yeah, and it's slowly, slowly understanding, sitting with them and understanding and then curbing it so that it, it fits in. You know, you will not get 100% of your vision, but it's to know what to compromise on and what not to. So some things like the scale of it, I didn't want it to be shorter. Like, you know, I'm like, no way, it should be big so that it fits that space and people go on, on it. So yeah. Uh, anyone else would like to ask any questions? Uh, so hi, uh, I wanted to ask like what was the unlikeliest place you saw design in action like with respect to art with intent? Like, uh, can you say it again? Likeliest? Unlikeliest place. Unlikeliest place where I've seen design? Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when I was talking to people, like when uh, I think Harshali spoke to me about participatory policy and design, I was like, what? Like, really? Uh, what does design have to play with that? And she brought in that guest and I was like, uh, uh, I am, I'm really interested. And I remember giving a, uh, a newspaper interview and again, I was talking about this and I said participatory and design. He's like, what does that has to do with design? And I'm just like, biotechnology and design. He's like, what does even that has to do with design? But biotechnology was more easier to show. The moment I tell you, that if someone has thought about that, how the coronavirus looks, then suddenly you're like, yeah, huh? Who is in design? Yeah, yeah, somebody has done that. So each time when there is an artist coming, uh, I am like, uh, awestruck and wondered like my productivity has gone down because of over inspiration like you know because you get over inspired and you are like okay i'm giving up that's what has happened like recently brian came and we called him as an origami artist but he's worked on uh, spacex ka shuttle so he's used origami engineering to create the shuttle wings and i was like what like, you know, I really, like when we called him, we called him because of his uh, smaller products that he's worked on. And then he told us this trivia and we were like, wow, <laughs> you know. So design has always, always surprised me like this and how people can use it. But, you know, uh, like I, I think it, it's, it's a way of looking at life, right? And it's so interesting to see different people using it in different way. Uh, and it is not accepted like this, like the notion is different of design. It is associated with fashion design, it is associated with interior design. And it's a very basic thing that we are trying to tackle here. Uh, and yeah, so I think it, you know, to answer your question in short, I think it's participatory policy and design. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, anyone else would like to ask any questions? Hi, so my question was, uh, what do you love about what you work on every day? And what is has been the most fulfilling work for you? Yeah. Uh... I really like when people, you know, uh, respond to my work, you know, 
like uh, that moment when it hits that like you've been you are sitting like this is my studio space i'm sitting here and i'm working there is a bunch of people who are working on it we are expecting a certain feeling right like we are expecting that they will feel this way and when you finally see it hit them is nothing like that i think uh, recently uh, how art with internet has gone is really excited me like because it was uh because one thing was uh, ar vr technology it's high end top notch but the impact was less you know it was a small number of people at some part of the world but when the impact was larger with something like art with internet and people are suddenly opening up and wanting to hear more about it and it was real time right like i went live i did hosting for few of the shows uh, and there was uh, live responses and people were asking questions and Uh, putting comments like uh, thanks for doing this you know uh, there was one kid uh, who is a kid okay these are a lot of them are just joining uh, colleges or deciding what to join she wrote to us saying that i've joined instagram for art with an and i'm like wow screenshot that frame it and keep it because see these kinds of impacts and these kinds of stories uh, i mean like you know that keeps you up or even if like somebody uh, like that's why like the uh, more than the technology exciting me i think it's the end product so if if it is not ar it's a wall art that we are doing and it is uh, you know moving somebody i think that that is what affects me uh, and uh, i think as a medium i really get excited with film as a medium because that's a medium which has the maximum impact like when you do something put something together uh, i'm doing a lot of work in microsoft in terms of editing these days and you know production so uh, i'm really excited uh, when i'm editing so i specifically like the process of editing uh, and putting something out uh so a follow up question to what you just said so since you started art with intent during the pandemic so according uh, so like what is the future of art intent uh once the pandemic and everything is back to normal so will you be continuing with art with intent or, and so on and so forth yeah 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 so basically it started with two of us it became like 10 15 of us who are working at the back end of art with intent we have reduced the number of shows we have made it weekly ones earlier it was more because all of us have gone back slightly like things are opening up so we don't want to bombard but we have some really really interesting things come up like especially you know there is a track where we are trying to uh, transcribe the interviews and push it out as a publication working on a website and archiving all the episodes uh, there is a team who was responsible for art with indian community which is on slack so we are starting challenges we are using uh, the power of the community to do uh, projects uh, so recently logo archive if you check it's an international brand logo archive have reached out to us asking actually we initially reached out to them so they were like oh, can we document the logos of india from you know 1990s uh, 1920s to 1990s uh, so uh, we are going to activate that in the community so suddenly like it like it became like it's more uh, about the community now and there are people who are joining us and taking it in interesting directions so i'm assuming that it will definitely grow and there is uh, i think the pandemic has shown us there is space for virtual presence also may not be 100% but this is going to be how it is right you were also telling me while trial someone was on campus few of you guys are on campus few are off so this hybrid way of working is going to happen for some time because suddenly technology has shown its power and how we can conduct a lot of things and the best things that we we could do is we got global access like we've been talking to artists around the globe which you know they were opening up their studios sketchbooks conversations uh to indians or like to us sitting here uh, and we were all locked up so that access was only because of technology and even now if i'm thinking of going there and shooting them and coming it's a very expensive affair here where i can just use the technology which you are not going to get here i'm using technology to 
you know uh, bring that uh, to everyone and it, it it's for free because it's it's a fight like as i told you like there should be a day where people recognize this form of design where art with intent exists so uh, and so it's a fight so we cannot price them we cannot uh, uh, we are trying to sustain so we are trying to monetize some bits and parts of it but uh, most of the things will be open for public so that they can consume because it's a fight where we have to reach it to a lot of people and make them understand there is an industry like this like uh, design is at this stage uh, i don't know what like if you talk about ux 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 ui design that is another um, black hole different people have different interpretations for that but it all stems from this common notion of creative solve problem solving so that's why uh, whenever we talk to these creatives also they also understand and identify that's one of the reasons why they coming and doing it like that so i think it will continue and i think this is one of the few forums where it's outward facing you know most of the design clubs are inward facing like we have a design community in nid you guys have it in iit like there are a lot of design schools who have it there are design forums i think this is the first time where we are saying this is for everyone you know if you are not and we are trying to create content which grabs people from other disciplines because it's a, i don't think design can stand alone it's time that it moves because i've seen design and tech come together and have an impact design and you know politics should come and have an impact because this is not a niche it should be something which is mainstream in the future uh i think yash mitkari has a question so yash Hello. you can yeah go ahead am i audible yeah you are i thought in love you so for, uh, as you work in vr i was inspired by ready player one in those initial vr days so looking forward in a 10 to 15 year gap how do you see the real vr which how do you see that coming into that period like where you actually feel immersed in a virtual reality type segment and how do you think uh, how is the technology shaping towards it or not shaping towards it? yeah so that's what uh, i was talking about mixed reality till now i think vr is something which i really see the potential in you know i think that can be part of our life soon because e- one you're connecting it to your computer like most of the vr so there is no uh, problem of it rendering high quality like you see high quality games now right they're so good so they're rendering like i think yesterday a couple of my friends had come and you know i was uh, making them wear uh, my vr headset so you were standing at the ledge of uh, the new york city the top the empire state building my friend just pushed him and he did oh my god you know like and it kind of tells you where this technology has gone like irrespective of we knowing it's a digitally simulated environment uh, he reacted in a way that anyone would have reacted if somebody is pushing him down and he was in this room a few seconds ago so i think vr is really promising vr is really promising and i keep thinking about these alternative spaces which is going to pop up you know the digital uh, real estate because if you look at things already most of the things are uh, digitized right now everything has an app even dating like people are dating on apps now like earlier like 10 years back if somebody told that to somebody you know people had to say no way you know that cannot happen but everything has an app right now so uh, if this is spatial computing like you know it, it's moving from a screen to your room i think that's the only jump the moment the technology is ready to go into your room like netflix is on your wall there skype is on your next wall there you know you can tap it off and you can see it through your glasses your sister or your mom who is wearing their glasses will not see that they can have their content deployed there so i'm really excited for vr man like if you honestly ask me like i am excited where oculus is going with their stuff uh, and i think the game industry is going to pick them up really soon uh, there are a couple of amazing games on vr already uh, where you are like once you are playing it halfway through you are hot shot is one i think it's called hot shot the other one is uh, some saber cube 
uh, these are amazing cases where you kind of forget that you are you were you know you are here in real time and you are somewhere else and you can just be there for hours like i've gone up to like 30 minutes 40 minutes straight because after that you kind of get a little dizzy uh but yeah that's a good time but i there's a video on youtube on somebody who lived inside we are for like some 3 3 days or one week or something like that check it out but yeah that's a stupid thing to do but yeah because your eyes will start bleeding man because it's, it's constantly is looking at a screen uh all right so maybe one last question uh before we conclude the session uh if anybody would like to ask anything maybe uh, you can uh, uh, like talk about how to get over a creative block i know you might have faced some creative blocks uh, uh, in your uh, while you are designing or like, like in your profession so as a designer how do you overcome a creative block yeah i mean there are a couple of uh, one one thing is like uh, i uh, keep doing a lot of things like there are a lot of projects so if there is a creative block in one i stop that and i try doing something else uh you know uh, so that i might get inspired from the other project to this project and uh, vice versa so uh, that's something which i try to do is like i at least need five six project running and it's happening and that fuels me so uh, if one is blocked i don't push it because you can't push a certain project right because um, somewhere it's art like somewhere it should start talking to you it should tell you what it needs so if like you know there is a creative block i just keep it there and i leave it and i kind of you know wait for it to jump back at me so there are a couple of projects uh, which i felt is a little too big for me to do or you know there is a block and i've kept it aside but uh, subconsciously i think we are all active yeah, uh, and you know you're trying to figure it out and that's how it works for me i kind of push it back i push it back and not think of it and do something uh, but yeah i always have my phone around uh, like uh, some of the things that you see on my instagram the latest ones are some videos which uh, you know i've been manipulating videos but these videos were taken 3 4 years back and uh, i still remember i was taking this water drop video and you know mom was asking what's wrong with you why are you taking this video i didn't know what i would have done i would do with that video but i just found it interesting and i i captured it two years later i found in after effects that you know i can do something with code and you know turn it around uh, so uh, at that point of time if you ask me so i keep collecting i keep collecting and i keep putting it storing it so you know i go back and check i go back and check i'm like hey is there something which is standing out is there something which and you might have not even know you know it must be an old picture or old video something that you've done or an old model which you've done and kept it and suddenly start speaking to you you're like hey you should know what we should have done this to this and you quickly take that up push it out Uh, uh that's that's how i do it and sometimes when there is creative block i just sleep like i actually go and sleep and i was like you know i can't think because uh, my way of working from forcing me to do i think doesn't work for me because i have to be attached to it because i look at it as a craft after all uh, it is a certain uh, you know uh, even if it's a craft of storytelling or you know whatever i'm doing i know if i force myself to do it i might take one day but tomorrow if i am in the mood to do it i will take one hour it will be that fast and i just wait for the right time you know i am constantly checking up on me saying that uh, is it the right time and i'm like yeah you know i feel good you know i think this is a good time to do it and i always sometimes i don't work on some projects like there will be a deadline and i will keep it there 
because i know you know i'm waiting for that idea i'm waiting for that thing to pop up and that comes i think it's just that you uh, have to keep checking with yourself be a little aware uh, of uh, uh, what you're doing and if that is there like you know at the back of your head you will not be able, like your brain will automatically try and solve it somehow that's how it happened to me you know it's sitting there you know oh my god i have to somehow solve this so i automatically end up solving it but i don't force myself to do it it's never worked for me whenever i force myself i lack confidence in selling the design you know talking about the design because when i'm standing there and talking about it my conviction matters and if i am doubtful it's gone if i am doubtful the 100 people sitting in the room are going to be doubtful for sure if i am confident that 100 people are thinking hey, why is he so confident maybe there is something in it you know right so i only i wait for that idea to be uh, i think that's the time i take i take take the time for me to convince myself as the only person i have to convince like if i am clear oh क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग ऐसा करना है ये अच्छा आइडिया है बिकॉज ऑफ सो एंड सो थिंग आई एम येस दिस इज इट नाउ आई विल सम हाउ मेक इट हैपन लाइक इफ आई एम नॉट कन्विंस देन देन इट विल शो इट विल रिफ्लेक्ट एंड इट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट रिफ्लेक्टेड ऑन एवरीथिंग दैट आई विन नॉट श्योर सो आई डोंट कॉम्प्रोमाइज आई एम लाइक ओके लाइक इफ इट्स नॉट देर आई से लाइक बॉस आई एम रियली सॉरी इट डिट कम बट वर्किंग इन द इंडस्ट्री आई मीन दिस वेरी लेस टाइम्स आर गॉन एंड टोल्ड i don't have anything because most of the time there is a time like you are a professional yeah you're not an artist like man nahi laga ya fir like you know mood off tha you can't go and say that uh, but um, you try to uh, come up with or you communicate to them why you are having that road block you know hey man you know i really don't think your product and the way you want the logo matches you know do you want to give that a thought you want to step back because i'm not able to so i share my problem with them rather than bending them and it's about convincing them right you know it's about like uh, and uh, that has always been a task of educating your client of what design could be you know what is the impact it could have uh, i mean a logo need not literally show that yours is an ice cream parlor it just can be a suggestion you know show them reference so when whenever i start any of my work uh, there is a you know there is an edu- like there is a uh, vertical where i educate the client show them take them through references spend that time with them understanding them what what do they mean by dark what do they mean by light it's very different what do they mean by uh, you know uh, uh, chakas what do they mean by are kickass what is kickass you can't give me a brief saying make a kickass logo i'm like come here what is kickass for you i'll show you 10 logos and tell me choose one which is kickass and none of them okay and that's the this was kickass for me so that because now you are in this profession now you have to get your things on paper and somebody is paying you for that so you have to talk real deal here so people say boss macha dena no i don't do send me some reference what is uh, you know uh, kick ass for you what do you mean by this you know understand the taste and once i understand that i'm like you like this you like this oh you like this from this you like okay okay once i know that i leave then i'm like chal ab you go because whenever I, for me my taste and your taste will be very different everybody sitting here when i'm like you know when i'm saying soft toy everybody is thinking of different things so i am expecting the client to also go in a different direction so a client or a team member so I, that initial phase is very very important where you bring people together and the second phase is also when you have to bring people together to execute it right it's a team work so you have to communicate these ideas so like people ask do you need sketch do you have to draw very well to be a designer i don't think so however you can you can if you can convince somebody bring them on the same i use sketching to do that that's my tool of choice yours could be something else you edit a video you to take two photographs and show and they are convinced you know it could be anything like for example i showed you that jigsaw puzzle and said hey you know there are empty spots and that's the exact jigsaw puzzle i showed them hey and i took that exact same reference like you open ms paint you don't know where to start 
why don't i have a half drawn figure and you know ask you to do the match the dots like if you remember a young young world mein and all aata hai 1 2 3 4 dots and you have to match match and make that was my inspiration and like what if we connect some and ask them to connect so the immediately they connected so you just need to uh so there is design happening there also design happening in convincing so i am also thinking of very creative ways to pitch my ideas not only the final design yeah. uh well uh before we conclude this session thomen thank you so much for sparing your uh, precious time from your busy schedule and interacting with us it was an absolute ple- pleasure talking to you and uh, to all the attendees we'll be uh, soon uploading the recording of this session on our youtube page so watch out for that and uh, yeah thank you so much thamen thank you guys thank you for and uh, we'll conclude now yeah thanks a lot hopefully see okay. you time somewhere Sure, sure. We'll definitely uh, maybe sometimes call you on campus and have a I, <laughs> in-person I, talk. Yeah, I have been there for Mood Indigo once. Uh, NID was uh, taking part in the uh, uh, dance there, and you know, I actually wanted to show you guys a picture because that was like one of my first projects. Uh, just let me just quickly show you that. Uh, so this is. Can you guys see this? Yeah. So that is me. This is the exhibition design batch, and we made this collapsible. Is this Tayyam? Yeah, we made a collapsible Tayyam costume to come to Mood Indigo and perform there because we couldn't carry this on train. So this whole thing is a collapsible thing, which goes into a four feet by four feet thing, and we did this in our first year. So yeah, I, I, I've been on campus, and we had like two of these big Tayyam costumes, which we carried there on train from Ahmedabad, and uh, and like the design, like it was made out of pipe and cloth, so it kind of you know completely folded in and flat packed. So yeah, <laughs> so I love the campus, and you know have stories there. So great guys, great talking to you all. So bye bye, take care. with that i land <laughs> okay bye bye